at PUC, there were a number of British folks there, and one of them was the Woodwards. And uh, as soon as war broke up, when Britain declared war, the oldest Woodward boy, Hugo Woodward, decided that he should go back and fight. And so he was the first of all the PUC boys that joined the army. And so I remember we had a real a chapel for him, bade him farewell, gave him a gift, and he went off to, uh, to in England and became a pilot. He fought for his country. But then after that, it was the draft. About once a month, we would have a farewell for the boys that were drafted, and off they went. And they did uh, their training, and then uh, quite a number of them, when I got to Calcutta, a whole bunch of them were in Calcutta, which was real interesting. And I thought that was part of the fun. But uh, my husband and I met during his sophomore year, I mean during his, yeah, his sophomore year, and I was a senior that year. And uh, although he was behind me, it didn't make any difference. We had a lot of fun. It was same, same background. It was so easy to get together. In fact, his roommate picked me out for him. I didn't know that till afterwards. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard the name Walter Ray. He was kind of a reprobate. He criticized the church a little bit. But anyhow, he was a very nice roommate and he picked my husband up. But PUC was a good time for us. We had four years there, and we worked very hard in trying to learn how to be Americans. Because, of course, we were brought up in a British family from British parents. It was a little difficult to become Americans, but we, we learned pretty much. We tried to talk like that. And then after PUC, I graduated, and then I worked for two years in the Southeastern California Conference, waiting for my husband to finish. And I saved money. I was a great skimper. I've always been very frugal. My father said, if you spend one penny more than you earn, you're always miserable. And if you spend one penny less, you're always OK. So my rule has been to always spend less. And in fact, we uh, were in Argentina all that time, and then we finally got all the way to India, 10 weeks on board the Umtali. And then when we got there, of course, we didn't have our stuff. We had a suitcase each with our clothes. That was it. And we left Argentina in April, around um, Easter time. And in November, our stuff, they finally got it to India. And uh, when we got our stuff, and of course, we'd been drawing money since because we never got a salary. And so finally in November, when everything was settled up, we had nearly 800 rupees credit. We were very proud of ourselves. But it, every place I went, I worked. And of course, I got a, a wife's salary. And that's kind of a joke. I was complaining about this half pipe, you know, this little drizzle for women. And then I ended up my paragraph by saying, well, it's my own fault, because I chose to get married. I could have stayed single and gotten full pay. <laughs> That's kind of the, the background there. And then when, as soon as we got to India, uh, they were still fighting in Burma. And so, very fortunately, Lenny is a teacher. And they needed a teacher where my parents were. And they thought, well, let these kids go where their parents are. So actually, we spent a year with my parents working there. I helped her with the school girl, with the girls, and my husband was teaching in the school. So it worked out really nicely for us. But there was constant fussing about the ship was going to go to Burma. No, it wasn't going to go to Burma. No, we, got a, we have a permit. No, we have to permit. And then he had to go to, he had to, go to Simla and to Delhi and all, trying to get a permit for us to go to Burma. And finally, when the Japanese surrendered, then the government uh, eased up a bit, and we got permits to go to Burma. And then that was when our, our time in Burma started. But there was a, that whole section there that was kind of interesting. Now, when we were in Gibraltar, it was kind of interesting. Most folks never stay in Gibraltar. We were there a week. And it's very interesting. That's where all the convoys to cross the Atlantic formed. 
And as they formed, the, uh, the Germans used to try to put these um, sticky bombs on the bottom of the ships to blow them up. So every 15 minutes, all the time you're there, they would drop depth charges so that they couldn't get the bombs there. So all the time you're hearing this boom, boom, boom. So it was an interesting time where you don't see very much. Oh. <laughs>